Japan is a land steeped in tradition and rich with a unique and beautiful culture that extends into its cuisine. Famous the world over for its simple flavors, cooking techniques, and even raw ingredients, the Japanese have truly taken food beyond flavors and into the realms of artistic expression. Join us as we explore the cultural flavors of Japan. Located in the Pacific Ocean, Japan is an island country in Southeast Asia. Japan is considered a unique culture as they have resisted outside influences. The art, design and even the food has distinct qualities only found in Japan. In Japan, um, the presentation of food is very important. We like to uh, so-called eat with the eyes. As a chef, we have different sets of rules in presenting all the food, uh, which a lot of customers might not realize but the way we dish it up on the plate the plate has to uh, be in a certain position um, and the food has to be tall at the back low at the bottom Japanese food is often based on a combination of rice or noodles with dishes made from meat fish vegetables or tofu being an island country seafood features prominently in the dishes of Japan especially shellfish crabs and fin fish all over Japan, the very various flavors of each dish um, is well worth looking into um, and uh, just track from north to south and try the different flavors. There are three varieties of Japanese hot pot, one of which is even a firm favorite with sumos. So the um, three main hot pots that we have uh, the chanko nabe, uh, which is what sumo wrestlers commonly eat. Um, it's a throw in anything kind of hot pot in a nice hot uh, clay pot. Um, the sukiyaki hot pot is a very traditional dish. Um, sukiyaki actually means um, to cook in a, a shovel, because that's what the farmers used to do. So they'd put in their uh, beef slices and vegetables in a nice sweet soy sauce broth and have that with some rice. Um, the third one, uh, the shabu shabu, is probably the most popular hot pot. Um, it's just a light broth and uh, you put in your, again, thin beef slices and some vegetables and take that on to your uh, sesame dipping sauce or ponzu, which is a citrus dipping sauce. This recipe uses a wide range of ingredients and can take some time to prepare. To create a sukiyaki cordial, you need to combine sugar and soy sauce. The dish features a number of vegetables as well as silky tofu and a selection of fresh noodles. We also use thin slices of premium beef. As an accompaniment, you'll need an egg for your dipping sauce and some fragrant rice. Before we begin to prepare a traditional Japanese sukiyaki nabe, first we must cook some rice. We're using a rice cooker to cook about two cups of rice. Remember to wash the rice before you cook it in order to remove any starch and then drain off the water. Place three cups of water into the rice cooker and get your rice going. 
An important ingredient in this hot pot is a diluted mix of sukiyaki sauce. Pour 400 grams of sugar into a large saucepan along with 700 ml of soy sauce. Light your stove and continue to stir the contents with a wooden spoon until the sugar dissolves completely, then allow to simmer. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to come to a boil, we're just going to quickly prepare the vegetables to put into the hot pot and then once the sauce comes to a boil, we'll switch it off and have it ready to pour in. First, take a medium onion and slice it in half and then into slithers like so. Now, line the base of a flat cast iron saucepan with a little oil and heat it. We are using a traditional sukiyaki pot. Place the onions into the pot, but do not spread them out. Take a bunch of spring onion, remove their heads and cut them into thirds. Add these to the onion. Next, take a few Chinese cabbage leaves, slice them in half and place these into the pan. This recipe also includes noodles. We are using udon and vermicelli. Both are fresh and ready to go. Add a handful of bean sprouts and a few chunks of tofu. And don't forget a Japanese favourite, shiitake mushrooms. Okay, so these shiitake mushrooms are commonly found in your local Asian grocery, but they often come dry. So what I've done is I've soaked these um, for about 10 minutes in some warm water and that makes it nice and soft. And we're just going to chop these stems off and cut them into bite-sized pieces. Once you've removed the stems, chop the mushrooms in half and add them to the pot with the other ingredients. Garnishing with a couple of slices of carrot will add a little colour to the dish and finish it off perfectly. Before we cook the vegetables, we need to dilute the sauce we prepared earlier. To do this, simply mix 300 ml of sauce with half a litre of water. Place your index finger into the middle of the ingredients and then pour the sauce up to about here. Heat the pan to a medium heat. As they simmer, turn each of the vegetables ensuring that they all cook evenly. A set of chopsticks is the perfect tool for the job. Finally, we add a few very fine slices of premium beef to the hot pot. The meat will not take long to cook in the hot liquid. The vegetables are cooked once they've reduced in size. This traditional hot pot is usually accompanied by an egg dipping sauce. This is cooked simply by adding some of the sukiyaki sauce from the pot. So there we have a traditional Japanese hot pot with plain boiled rice and egg dipping sauce. Nowhere would you see a meal that is as delicious to eat, as healthy for the body, or as pleasing to the eye. Coming up on Cultural Flavours, discover the secret to tempura and the art to great sushi. Japanese cooking is often remembered for its unique meat and fish preparations, but vegetables are a large part of the local cuisine. A majority of vegetables used in Japan are common in many countries, with root vegetables and mushrooms popular. Chinese cabbage is one of the most widely used vegetables, appearing in all kinds of dishes right across the country. Eggplant, or nasu, is an important vegetable in Japan and features in a wide variety of dishes. A popular dish is for the eggplant to be halved and baked under a layer of miso paste. Eggplant is also used in soups, stir-fries and often has sugar added to it during cooking. Japanese mustard spinach, or komatsuna, is similar to spinach and is well known for its health benefits in Japan. It is eaten raw in salads, boiled in soups or added to curries. Japanese mustard spinach is also pickled in some regions. The goya, or bitter melon, is famous in Okinawan cuisine and a key ingredient in goya chamuru, Okinawa's signature dish, a stir-fry with goya, tofu and eggs. Like its name, the flavour of the goya is extremely bitter and is recognised as the most acerbic of all melons. 
Mushrooms, or kinoko, are a large part of the Japanese diet. Enoki mushrooms are grown in tight bunches and are often added to stews and soups. Japanese mushrooms have become known the world over for their unique flavor and are available fresh, dried, or even canned in most countries. Considered quintessentially Japanese, the method of preparing tempura was actually introduced by the black ship of the West hundreds of years ago. Tempura um, is basically any vegetables, um, seafood, uh, e even different types of meat. Um, it's lightly battered in uh, a tempura flour um, and then shallow fried. Um, a lot of people think that tempura is very uh, traditional Japanese, but it actually um, was brought in by the Portuguese when the black ships arrived um, a few hundred years ago. And uh, it's, it's commonly um, not known as being a Portuguese word, but tempura means to fry. To make a dipping sauce for the tempura, you will need a few important ingredients. Mirin, a sweet cooking sake, grated ginger, and daikon, or white radish. Tempura batter is used to coat the vegetables before frying. You'll also need some water and ice. We'll tempura a range of seasonal vegetables, including beans, capsicum, carrots and onions. First, We'll prepare the tempura dipping sauce. Put one third of a cup of Honda sashi to 900 ml of water and give it a quick mix. Pour this solution into a saucepan and then add 200 ml each of soy sauce and mirin. Bring to a simmer. Okay, so once the dipping sauce is coming to a simmer, we'll turn it off and we'll prepare the condiments that accompany it. Um, I've actually pre-prepared a bit of uh, grated ginger and here we have some grated daikon radish, otherwise known as white radish. So these will go into the tempura sauce. Quickly add the grated ginger and daikon to the sauce. Now we can start to chop the vegetables. Start with a green capsicum and remove its stalk and seeds. Then slice it into pieces of about this size. Do the same with a red capsicum. When making tempura, it's best to have a good variety of vegetables. Chop your onion like so and use a cocktail stick to keep the segments together when cooking. Chop your carrots into bite-sized pieces along with your sweet potato and pumpkin. Just top and tail your string beans. Now's a good time to heat some vegetable oil in a pan to 180 degrees. Okay, your vegetables are ready to go now so we can start the batter. Place 200 grams of tempura flour into a large mixing bowl. Add the yolk of an egg and then pour in 600 ml of water. Lastly, add a cup of ice into the mix. Swiftly, stir with a pair of chopsticks and ensure that the flour doesn't completely dissolve, leaving some residual clusters. It's important not to spend too much time mixing. Now we can start to batter the bite-sized vegetable pieces. First, lightly coat them in dry tempura flour. Now that your oil is nice and hot, take your coated vegetables and, one by one, dip them into the batter, shake off any excess, and then place them in the oil to fry. Keep a good eye on your vegetables and remove them as the batter begins to turn a light golden brown. 
Take them from the pan and place where any excess oil can freely drain. Mixed vegetable tempura is best enjoyed with the dipping sauce that we prepared earlier, along with plain boiled rice and some good friends. Next on Cultural Flavours, we get rolling as we reveal the art to fine sushi. No other dish is more synonymous with Japan than that of sushi, and it has become one of the country's greatest exports to the world. We have a few different types of sushi. Uh, we have maki sushi, which means sushi roll. Um, that's the most common type of sushi. Uh, we also have the temaki sushi, which literally means hand-rolled sushi, so no rolling mats used. Um, you just have a piece of seaweed and put in anything you like and roll it into a cone shape. Um, the third one is the nigiri sushi, which is uh, usually fish, um, can be meat or vegetables on top of a small bowl of rice. Uh, prices of sushi can be very expensive. Um, toro, which is the fat, fatty part of a tuna belly, um, from a bluefin tuna in Japan, in Ginza, it can cost up to about $90 for two pieces. Today, we're going to show you how to make a sushi selection. We're using a variety of fillers, such as fresh vegetables and fruit. Of course, seafood is a major component of many sushi dishes and in addition to a fresh salmon fillet, we will use tobiko, which is the roe from a flying fish and crab sticks. You'll also need a number of condiments to enhance the flavours of the fillers. Essentials are Japanese mayonnaise, sesame seeds and, of course, wasabi. To create authentic sushi rice, you will need a number of ingredients just to produce sushi vinegar. Finally, you will need some leaves of nori which is made from seaweed and found at any Asian supermarket along with many of the other ingredients used today. First, pre-cook about 5 cups of a short grained rice. Now, to create a sushi vinegar which is used to flavour the rice. Place 180 ml of rice vinegar into a saucepan, along with 100 grams of sugar and 25 grams of salt. Finally, place a piece of kombu sea kelp into the pan and heat on a low to medium flame and stir until the sugar and salt dissolve. Bring the mix to a simmer and then remove from the heat. Now we need to do a little preparation. Take a sheet of nori and fold it in half. Next, slice some cucumber, like so, and remove the seeds from the centre. Slice an onion and put it to one side. Next, we need to remove the skin from the salmon. Place a sharp knife just under the skin and, while keeping hold of the skin, run the blade down the length of the fillet. Slice off a section and put the rest of the fish to one side. We will now finish off the sushi rice. Once the rice has cooked, let it sit in the cooker for an extra 10 minutes before placing into a large mixing bowl. Pour 180 ml of your sushi vinegar over the rice. Okay, so once we've poured the vinegar over the rice, we need to ensure that the rice is cooled down before we start making any sushi rolls or nigiris. So we're going to cool it down in front of this fan. Okay, so we need to ensure that we bring the hot rice from the bottom to the top and cut through it instead of pushing down because that will damage the rice. So in front of the fan, lifting the hot on top of the cold at the top and then mixing it through. At last, now we can start the process of making sushi. 
place a sheet of nori onto a sushi rolling mat. Then dip your hands into some ice water, dry off any excess water before grabbing a handful of sushi rice and rolling into a ball. Using your fingers, spread the rice out over the nori sheet. Scoop a touch of wasabi onto your fingertips and sprinkle it down the center of the roll. Take two pieces of cucumber and place them lengthwise. Now carefully roll together and then put to one side. Another sushi favorite is the California roll inside out. First, place some cling film over your rolling mat and then cover this with a piece of nori. Dip your hands in some ice water like before and then roll another ball of rice. Spread the rice over the nori sheet, then carefully turn the sheet over so the rice is on the bottom. Take some Japanese mayonnaise and run along the nori just off centre. Next, place a couple of crab sticks like so. Then, with a tablespoon, scoop out some avocado and position it alongside the crab. Now carefully roll the sushi together and put them to one side. To prepare nigiri salmon, first take your piece of salmon and cut into fine strips like so. Dip your hands in water and roll a small ball of rice. Place a small dab of wasabi onto a piece of salmon and then squeeze the fish around the rice ball. Place on a plate. Aburi salmon is a milder variation of nigiri salmon. Squeeze a rice ball together with another piece of salmon, but this time do not bother with the wasabi. Place the fish on a dish and top it with some Japanese mayonnaise. If you have one, sear the salmon and mayonnaise with a small blowtorch. Finally, Garnish with a pinch of chopped Spanish onion. Now we can finish the California and cucumber rolls. Place the inside out roll onto a chopping board and cut it in half with a sharp knife. Then carefully remove the cling film from both halves. Roll one half into a tub of fish eggs. Roll the other half in a tub of sesame seeds. Then place them back to back on the board and cut them into equal pieces. To finish the cucumber roll, place it onto your chopping board, chop it in half and then into three equal pieces as before. Serve your sushi with wasabi and pickled ginger garnish. Now there you have it, a simple step-by-step -step guide to sushi rolls and nigiri salmon. Now all you need to do to make delicious sushi at home is practice. The food of Japan is cultured and considered, combining wonderful presentation with simple but delicious flavours. Elements of Japanese food culture are appearing in Western cuisine more and more, as the West embraces not only the flavours of this amazing country, but the health benefits of the traditional Japanese diet, rich in fish, vegetables and fresh produce. Cultural Flavors continues to explore the world through the diversity of food. From Sudan to Singapore, Italy to India, let Cultural Flavors take you on a gastronomic journey so you can experience the tastes of the globe at home. Hello.